Dear ladies and gentlemen, in the next few minutes, I want to present you my experience with the R by 4K 3D Axiscope in Spine Surgery. My name is Sven Eicher. I'm professor of neurosurgery at the University Hospital in Hamburg in Germany. I want to talk about the operation room settings and then about the surgical positioning, talking about the learning curve, then present you a few cases that then at the end I draw the conclusion. Starting with the operation room settings, mostly the operation theaters are not solely designed for only spine surgery. Most operation rooms are designed for a multidisciplinary setting, for example, brain surgery and spine surgery and trauma surgery. And there we have the problem that there is an interaction with our tools. For example, a microscope with a horizontal and vertebral arm uh, as an interaction with uh, operation light and this caused problems during the operation. In comparison to the microscope, the uh, axoscope, in this case the Arbor axoscope, has a more horizontal arm and there we will not have that much problems in interaction with other devices. The second thing I want to talk about is surgical position. I love to do ACDF surgery standing on the right side of the patient and my assistant surgeon at the head. The problem is that I like to see the cervical spine in line and using a microscope I have to turn my back 90 degrees to the left side and also turn my head around. This cause back pain is not very comfortable for me. Comparing the microscope with the axoscope, the axoscope is much more comfortable for me. I also stand on the right side of the patient, only turning my back a little bit to the left side and I can leave my head in the position I want to have it because I can position the monitor and also the assistant surgeon can position his monitor where I want to and follow the operation in a perfect way. Surgical positioning is one thing, but the device itself is the other thing. The comfort with the device is very important for the surgery and the lightweight camera of the Orbi is perfect after locking the mechanism and there's no additional movement. This is one thing I really love. The other thing is that there are only a few switches. We have the zoom switch, we have the focus switch and we have the locking switch. And then there are only additional three buttons and with these six switches you can control your device completely. The last thing is the wireless foot switch. If you have to leave your hands in the operational field, you can additionally use a foot switch, which is easy to use. And the same buttons are only on the sw foot switch, like at the head of the camera. Coming to the third uh, point, learning curve. The learning curve of the exoscope in comparison to the microscope is very steep. I only had to do three or four cases and I had the same comfort than with a microscope, but I only had additional nice tools with the Orbi and also additional advantages. After two or three operations, I had the same 100% performance in comparison to the microscope. Coming to the cases, the first case I want to present you is the cervical disc herniation at the level C4-5. You can see the herniation on the MRI scan. The positioning I mentioned before is quite nice for me, standing on the right side of the patient, turning my back on a little bit to the left side. On the first video, you see how we open the cervical disc. It's quite nice magnification here. On the second video, you see the removed disc and we are looking on the spinal dura. There's nearly no reflection of the spinal dura and you actually see how we remove the last parts of the disc. In the last video, you see something we normally do not use magnification because this is a step we insert the probe cage, we insert the final cage, we do only under X-ray. The problem is that all the students in the operation theater and also the scrub, scrub nurse cannot see this part of the operation. With a small head of the exoscope, we put in the operation exoscope during the operation and show all the guys in the operation theater what we are doing. Coming to the second case, an L5 norinoma. You can see the norinoma on the MRI scan and the position is both surgeons standing next to the patient. In the first video you see how we 
prepare and remove the lower part of the norinoma. And you can nicely see the vessels on the tumor and that there's nearly no reflection on the nerve roots. On the second video, you see the incoming nerve roots to the tumor and also nearly no reflection on the surface of the tumor, but you can nicely see all the vessels. And this is the postoperative MRI scan. Coming to the third case, it's a case of an unknown primary with destruction of the C5 vertebra. Positioning is the same than in ACDF surgery, as I mentioned before. On the first video, you see the removed vertebra and the insert um, device. Normally, you do not need magnification during this step of operation, but you can see the bleeding and it's really nice to have magnification during the treatment of this bleeding after tumor removement. And in the second video, you see a part of the operation we do not need magnification normally. But as I mentioned before, it's quite nice for the staff members and all the students standing around also to see this part of the operation, putting in the plate and fixing the plate. This is quite nice for all people in the operation theater to follow the operation from the beginning to the end. And at the end, this is the postoperative CT scan. The presented cases were all operated with white light, but there are additional observation modes in this uh, Arbeit system. One thing we really do in uh, Hamburg is vascular spine surgery. For the removement of an AVM or an operating fistula, it's very helpful to see the vessels during the operation in a kind of angiography. The infrared imaging mode helps us to identify the early veins and also to check the uh, result after we finish the operation. The second tool the Arbor system offers is the uh, fluorescence tool. Blue light imaging mode helps us sometimes in spinal surgery to identify scar tissue against active tumor. And this can help removing the tumor in recurrent cancer or recurrent norinoma or meningiomas in spine surgery. The last observation mode is a narrowband imaging mode. This can nicely show you the vessels and this is a, an advantage in spinal cord surgery because the approach through the spinal cord is caught by a vessel and this mode can show you really nice the vessels. Drawing the conclusions, I think the Orbi Accesscope is a really easy to use device. It's a very small but a multifunctional device compared with a microscope, the most microscopes are much bigger. It has a steep learning curve. I think only a few cases are necessary to have the same performance with a microscope. And it has a perfect visualization not only for the surgeon and the assistant surgeon, but also for the scrub nurses and the students in the operation theater. So in my opinion, it's ideal for spine surgery. Thank you for your attention.